All right, we are at shotgunfind.com looking for a shotgun, specifically general hunting and target shotgun. We can do a little bit of everything with. We do want a semi-auto, gas or inertia doesn't matter. And price range 750 to 850 is all we have the budget for. Let's see what our options are. Look at that, only three guns. We've reviewed this one, reviewed this one. And now we got the S12 Premier Elite by Wimberly Arms. Let's check that out. No review as you can see, but that changes right now. What's up everyone? Welcome to Target Focus Life. Never heard of Wimberly Arms? Either had we, until we were putting together the shotgun finder, researching all the brands, getting all the data for the website, and we were intrigued by Wimberly Arms. Then we met with Travis Mears down at his range, and he was actually carrying them in his pro shop. And he said, you should definitely check them out. Wimberly Arms is out of Texas. Their shotguns are manufactured in Turkey. I know, a lot of shotguns are manufactured in Turkey. Some great, some not so much. But I'm really intrigued by this brand. Looking at their website, they have some personality, and I like that. When you look at their vision, they said the vision behind Wimberly Arms is to put more guns into people's hands, specifically slash hopefully our guns. We started to design and manufacture high quality guns that you can be proud to pass down to your favorite child. We embrace the vision of more gun ownership through our philanthropic activities, starting with high school shooting teams and collegiate shooting teams, continuing into wildlife conservation, farm and ranch conservation, military and veteran support, and the Texas Parks and Wildlife. So Turkish made shotgun, uh, but what they say they did is they took a lot of the other shotguns out there. They, for months, just used and abused them, saw where the weak spots were on the shotguns that they shot and made sure their shotguns were gonna hold up to the test of time. Now today, we're not gonna be able to put thousands and thousands of rounds th through this gun, but we'll take a quick peek of what it's like. I already got a little over a box through it, uh, been crushing clays with it. This is the S12 Premier. This is kind of a sporting gun. It's more of your general gun. Uh, you could shoot some clays with it. You could hunt with it. I don't think it's set up for anything specifically. In fact, uh, here's what Wimberly says. The S12 Premier is a Bala shot collar variant of our S12. Calling this our black and yellow theme is almost accurate, but it takes it a step further with gold, not yellow accents. Our polished flat lifter, gorgeous wood furniture, laser engraved bolt, and our excellent tuned gas system for the most ammunition agnostic experience with the lightest recoil. If you need a little bling in the field or at the sporting clay course, this is the Wimberly for you. 20 inch rims on the Impala not included. They have some personality and I like that. Is this just another run of the mill Turkish shotgun or will this stand above the others? We're gonna dive into it today. Let's first take a look at specs. Starting with the MSRP, we're looking at a $789.99 MSRP. So uh, reasonably priced. This puts it sort of in the ballpark of the TriStar Viper G2 and the CZ712 G3. And so we're kind of in that ballpark. And that's why we love the Shotgun Finder. Shameless plug here. Uh, if you're looking for a gun between seven and $800 semi-auto, you can see what your options are right there. And if we reviewed it, learn all about it. So if you haven't checked it out yet, the Shotgun Finder at shotgunfind.com. Uh, check that out. There's a feedback link in the bottom of that page. If you have feedback on how we can make it better and more useful for you, let us know. 789.99, 12 gauge shotgun, only available in 12 gauge shotgun, three inch chamber. This is a gas gun with a weight of, they say, 6.3 pounds. And what our scale says is seven pounds, 4.8 ounces. That makes more sense because when I was holding this in my hands, I was like, that's at least a seven pound gun. Seven pounds, 4.8 ounces. So put that in the bank. Um, comes with three mobile choke thread pattern choke tubes. Um, we have the mod in there right now, 28 inch barrel length. As far as the specs of this stock, let's take a look. Length of pull out of the box. We're looking at 14 and a, almost a quarter. I'm closer to 14 and a, eight yep 14 and eighth is what i get uh there was no spacers to adjust length of pull in the box i don't know if they have them aftermarket when it comes to the drop at the comb again i didn't see any shims to be able to adjust this so it is important that you know what this is out of the box because you're going to be limited 
Of course, we can always adjust length of pull with aftermarket stuff. That's a little bit easier with pads. You know, we could even add a Falcon Strike and you're gonna get another half inch of length of pull out of that, uh, plus a lot more enjoyable shooting experience. The drop at comb, we're looking at right around an inch and three eighths. The drop at the heel, two and three eighths. Yeah, we were right at about an inch of drop. A little too much drop for me. It's too short for me. But I can tell you, I've been shooting it pretty well. So I'm excited to review this shotgun. One last thing we wanna take a look at with specs is the trigger pull. I could tell you right off the bat, the trigger is a little bit heavier for sure. We're looking at right around a seven pound trigger, but let's not uh, take my word for it. That would be silly because I'm terrible at guessing. Seven pounds, 1.2 ounces. What did I say? Right around seven pounds. Let's try that again just to make sure we're in the same ballpark. Six pounds, 14.7. So just under seven pounds. Six pounds, 11 ounces. So we had a few pulls under seven pounds. We're right around seven pounds, just sub seven pound trigger. Picking this gun up and playing with it a little bit. It's one thing I noticed right off the bat was the trigger. Fair amount of pre-travel before it breaks there. This is not necessarily the end of the world. This is not a competition gun. If I was shooting a competition gun, I would never really want that, but we'll see how it actually affects me when we get to shooting clays and then speed shooting at the end. Let's take a look at the ergonomics. The look, the feel, the function. Starting at the back end, we just got a real standard recoil pad. It's got a little squish to it. Uh, it's harder on the edges, squish in the middle, and hard on top, which is helpful for not catching on the mount. Grip is a narrow grip, feels pretty good in the hands. For me to get my hand on the trigger, I do rub the receiver a little bit. Not totally uncommon on a field gun. That would be uncommon on a sporting gun. Usually they're gonna have a bigger pistol grip. Your hand's gonna be down a little further. Uh, the forend, got some slight contours on the top, a slight tapering towards the forend, texturing all the way along. I like that, so kind of no matter where you grip, fairly comfortable forend. We got a pretty basic triangular safety. It is a little bit challenging to push. The bolt handle, just a standard bolt handle. I do like the bolt, by the way. Uh, I think that's laser engraved. Just kind of a little bit of uniqueness there. That's pretty cool. The bolt release is this gold release button. It is, I mean, not necessarily easy, but not incredibly tough. It won't lock back on its own, so you gotta hit that button right there. It is very common, however, I don't like it. There's plenty of guns that you don't have to do that, but there's probably more guns where you do have to do that. Like the SX-4, that's not the case, um, and several other guns. But uh, there's the controls, pretty basic controls. Loading port, I mean, slightly beveled, but pretty sharp along the edges. It hasn't been a big deal yet. Loading has been fairly simple. Uh, no big complaints there. I mean, at a sub thousand dollar gun, I'm not gonna complain too heavily about that. As long as it works, everything's functional, it shoots well, feels good, that's yet to be determined. It has one bead in front, small fiber, vented rib, flat off the receiver. Top of the receiver is milled out. You could add some optics on there if you so chose. The wood is uh, standard grade wood, but it looks decent. I've definitely seen worse, again, we try to keep everything relative to price point. So you're talking sub $800 on this shotgun. I said sub 1,000, sub $800 MSRP. Pretty standard shotgun uh, overall with some uniqueness to it. Forward heavy for sure when we look at balance. Not the end of the world if it creates a smooth swing. I don't know if I'd wanna walk all day with this shotgun as a field gun. I mean, you're gonna see if we put two fingers there, big time forward heavy. But balance point is somewhere in here. Not a huge difference. I notice it in my hands. That's the thing when you walk with a field gun. If you're off on balance and I'm walking through the field like this, this forward hand and arm are gonna feel it over time. Well-balanced guns carry easier. This is sub eight pounds. It's a little bit heavy for a field gun, but definitely would work as a field gun as well. Enough talking, let's get to shooting. Let's put in the axles. By the way, that's what I'm using today, the Axel X-Core Bluetooth, but they come in a cool charging case like this. Pretty reasonably priced, discount code and link down below. Uh-oh, like I said, I got a little over a box into this gun. 
I did have some cycling issues. There is potentially a break-in period, but having several issues with it not fully ejecting. There we go. So we'll continue to monitor that as we shoot this gun, see if it loosens up. Uh, it's definitely not gonna shoot from the hip. Uh, definitely not gonna shoot over the head if you can't get it to shoot from the shoulder. But recoil feels decent. Recoil's not overly heavy. Let's uh, just take some off the machine here. Gives us a little more accurate representation. Here's out the six machine. Hey, it cycled and I got it on the second shot. This gun is way too short for me. There we go. Recoil's actually really manageable. That felt pretty good and I think it cycled. Let's take one off the five machine. One thing I noticed with this gun is it does seem to shoot really nice, really true to where I'm looking. I have enjoyed that aspect. I'm liking the recoil too, it's a nice shooter. If we're gonna cycle reliably. Oh yeah. But that seems to be the issue. Shoots really nice, but can we get it to cycle reliably? Well, now it works. I think we're just loosening it up. I think this gun is gonna come around and be reliable. I don't know if it's ever gonna be the most reliable uh, type shotgun, but if you're shooting from the shoulder, shoots pretty good. Shoot from the hip, look at it, it's loosening up. Uh, I do need to disclose that Wimberly sent me this shotgun. I always appreciate when manufacturers are willing to send me a product and review it because I tell them, I'm gonna say what I say, right? You send me a shotgun, that doesn't mean I'm gonna only say nice things. I will point it out as I see it because I make these for you, the viewers. Wimberly sent me the gun and inside they had a little note. Steve, thank you for the opportunity to review our shotguns. We know everything will work out well, but please let us know if you have any questions, the Wimberly team. I appreciate that. That is the only time that has actually happened from a shotgun manufacturer where they've sent me a little note. I could do a whole lot more reviews if manufacturers would send the guns, but as you guys know, guns aren't cheap. I don't know how many reviews do we do in a year? Any given year? 20, 30, 40? Yeah. A lot of reviews. If we had to buy every one of those guns, it would really add up. So it's starting to cycle really well. Um, let's just uh, let's just try this out of curiosity. No, I didn't figure that would work. Ah, still not 100% on the cycling, but that was the hip. Let's go back to the shoulder. She's warming up. Now with every gun I review, as most of you probably know, I do break it down, I clean it out, and I lubricate all the guns the same way. Close, close to cycling well. We'll circle back to this by the end of the video and uh, we'll see if it's cycling well. But for now, I got a load of gun. We better empty it. There, there we go. We're gonna break this gun down. We're gonna look at quality. I do like the foreign cap on this shotgun. I like the grooves, just real easy to pop off. Spins off like most shotguns do. Nothing unique there. Let's see what happens fore end off. And then we have a barrel nut. That's one more step to do, but I kind of get why they're there. It really locks the barrel down without having to use the fore end to do that. Take stress, stress off the fore end. And then uh, this is a gas system, as I mentioned earlier in the video, and that barrel is hot. So the barrel and piston there. And then we're left with the bolts and uh, the front part of the gas system here. When I took this apart and cleaned it, this is where I had some challenges. You do gotta line the bolt up so it looks like it's perfectly lined up on that groove. There we go. Bolt handle off, then the bolt and the carrier all comes off like that. We're left with the spring, that retainer piece. One pin, punch it out. And there we are, trigger group, out. You can see quite a bit of carbon buildup already. Uh, what are we, just over two boxes in, I believe. Not uh, uncommon for a gas gun. Yeah, pretty, pretty standard inside. Uh, I don't see any issues. A lot of parts, a lot of, a lot of parts, not the simplest gun to take apart and uh, put back together, but it's not terrible. 
uh, once you figure out the nuances, every gun has little nuances. There we go. Pop the pin back in. Yeah, a lot of pre-travel on that. This piece goes on first. Bolt slides on, slides right in there, easy peasy. And this is what I'm talking about. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little half moon or circle right there that this part of the bolt has to go into. So we gotta push that up into the right spot, I believe, for this to work. And then that goes in, that wasn't too bad. We'll put the piston into the cylinder. Slide that back in. There we go. Barrel nut. Four end. So that metal piece that goes up against the receiver right here, part of what that does is really help stabilize the fore end so we don't have that wiggle. And I like that. I actually like that. I don't like having more pieces than necessary, but that's solid. Very, very solid. Quality wise, I don't really see anything that's a major concern. It's a $800 shotgun. As long as we can get it to cycle, and that's really what we need to do. So we're gonna put this gun on the clock. Three clays, speed shooting. See how fast we can shoot three clays. And what this will really tell us is the mountability, point ability, cycling ability, the recoil, reliability, all those things coming together. And then we'll give our final thoughts on the Wimberley S12 Premier. By the way, the S12, has several different versions. They have the S12 standard, which is MSRP of about $598. Then you have a S12 field and camo, about $698. And then you have the S12 Elite, which is $825. Just a little step up from this gun on fit and finish. We're hot to trot. Let's get it on the clock. Now, before we get to speed shooting, I'm gonna try to loosen this gun up a little bit. I got the Federal Prairie Storm, ounce and a quarter, 1,500 feet per second. We'll also look at recoil this. We never shot game loads when we were looking at recoil. Oh yeah, geez Louise. That, straight back into the shoulder though. That wasn't too bad. One machine. Did you see me crush that one? Let's do that again. Did you see me miss that one? No problem cycling these though. Not at all. So no problems there with the Prairie Storm. Recoil pretty much straight back, a little in my face, but that could be because it's uh, too short for me. That makes a difference. Hey, I broke two at one time, but that cycled nice. So that's one thing you could do if you got a new gun and it's having some issues cycling. Go to some heavier loads. Get it to work those springs to loosen up a little bit, the action to loosen up, wear down any parts that need to be worn down a little bit. Yeah, I uh, threw early, but I had a 1.8 and a 2.3 split, total time of a 0.98, threw a little bit early. I think we all saw that. No cycling issues after shooting those Prairie Storm, and uh, we're dusting clays. Of course, I threw in a cylinder choke for this, or improved cylinder. Trigger. A lot of sponge in that trigger, a lot of pre-travel. I was trying to let off before the trigger even broke, get a rip on a little bit. It points nice. It swings well. Um, that trigger. That trigger. 167. That's all trigger right there, folks. I don't like to make excuses, but I don't think I've missed a clay that I've shot at. Points nice. Mounts nice. There I missed a clay, and that was because of the trigger. Really having to rip on it. We'll give it another attempt, but so far, no cycling issues, hitting most of the clays we're shooting at, points nice. That trigger is leaving something to be desired. There we go. Threw a little bit early, a 0.71. Yeah, I would say I threw early. A 2.6 and a 2.2. Tough to get really good splits on this shotgun, primarily because of the trigger. Now, is it much different than other guns at this price point? I don't really think so. Maybe a little more pre-travel, weight-wise in the ballpark of what you're gonna see uh, guns like this at this price point. Speed shooting, it really affected me. Other than that, I really enjoyed it. Uh, recoil was moderate. Uh, I wouldn't say it was overly light, but it definitely wasn't heavy. Took it straight back to the shoulder. It pointed well, swung nicely. 
Uh, shooting off the machines, the trigger didn't really give me too many issues. Of course, we didn't shoot any true pairs. Really, no issues there. I got them both. I didn't hit them great, but I, I got them both. This gun swings really nice. I really enjoyed that. Uh, that's probably one of the highlights. Seems to shoot pretty true without putting it on paper. It's a decent looking gun for the price point. I do like the laser engraved bolt, a little gold accent. Um, pretty nice looking gun, low light. Uh, for me, I would say would be the, how much sponge there is in the trigger. Just a lot of pre-travel. Um, but for a budget priced semi-auto gun that you could do a little clay shooting with, a little hunting with, I think it's a pretty neat gun. Wimberly Arms, it's the S12 Premier. Uh, worth, worth checking out. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you liked the first look at Wimberly Arms. Remember, whether you're in the field or in life, you're only gonna hit those shots, you're laser focused on. So live, target focused. See ya.